Hi, I'm Jonathan McCord. I'm going to talk to you about ticks today, focusing on diseases and ticks of North America, more specifically United States and Canada. So we'll start off talking about the two kinds of ticks, the two major types. They're soft and hard ticks. Hard ticks are more common in countries that are considered first world or second world, such as US, Canada, most of Europe. Uh, the soft tick is less common in the industrialized world and more common in developing countries such as Africa, South America, places like that. There are obvious differences in how they look. I'll post a clip of the differences between the hard and soft tick. Now most people would consider a tick an insect. It's actually not. They're more closely related to the, the spider than any other kind of the insect. The way they attach, they don't fall out of trees or actively look for a host. What they'll do is stand on grass or bushes, usually knee height or lower, and they will stand or stand on the leaf or the grass with their two or their first four legs out. And then if something walks by, a deer, a person, a dog, they'll latch on with kind of a hook-like arm. And then once they're on, they'll start crawling towards an area that is best for attachment. And in people, generally they wear in pants. They'll walk up the pants until they find the waist area or, or skin. And they'll attach commonly around the waist, the armpit, the scalp, uh, possibly the back. A lot of that depends on what the hiker is wearing. If you're wearing a backpack, your shoulder straps are rubbing on your on your shoulders and chest and armpits. Unlikely the tick's going to attach there because there's too much mechanical disturbance from the strap rubbing. Your back the same. If your back's rubbing a lot, the tick's not going to attach there. They'll attach places where they're going to be somewhat protected uh, because it does take time for them to attach. On dogs and deer and cows, stuff like that, generally they'll attach the neck, head, ears, very common, inside and out. Um, even in kind of the armpit of the dog, whatever that's called in dog lingo, but I call it the armpit. Uh, those are common areas to check on your dog, as well as the center of their back. Now, ticks can spread disease. Uh, it does take 24 to 72 hours of atta after attachment to spread that disease, and it varies on disease to disease, but the three most common in the western U.S., which is kind of the focus since I'm out here in Utah, Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, and Colorado Tick Fever. There are symptoms that are specific to each one of those three I mentioned. So Lyme disease will have headache, neck stiffness, and fatigue are real common. Meanwhile, the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever will have round, splotchy rashes over the body. They'll progress from a light pink to a red that does not blanch, meaning when you touch it and then let go, or press on it and let go, it doesn't go from white to pink again or white to red again, it stays red. And then from red, it will progress to a black splotches. And those um, are the later stages of the disease. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is also potentially fatal within the first few days of onset of the symptoms. Now, Colorado Tick Fever, that has the characteristic of a biphasic fever, meaning it's more like um, some tropical illnesses where you have a high fever, maybe around 102 for a few days, and it will go away for a few days as if you were recovering and then it will come back 102 and go back down it'll go up and down for a while but just be aware biphasic fever is not uh, always a for sure symptom with this uh, disease sometimes you might just have a sustained fever more like when you have the flu. Now the life cycle of the tick there's four phases there's the egg, the larva, the nymph, and the adult. The last three the larva, nymph, and adult are where it can bite and transmit disease. Most commonly, it's going to be the adult is what you're going to see and actually get bit. In addition by. to the life cycle, the tick they only breed while they're feeding, and often you'll females are larger than males. Often you'll see the female attached, and if you look underneath the female, you'll see a smaller male attached to her. Generally, females are more likely to bite you than the males. There are several ways to remove ticks. You can use a long, narrow tweezer like almost like an alligator forcep where you pinch between the head and the skin so you're actually of the person or the animal so you're grabbing more of the mouthpiece and you make a firm steady pull you don't want to go so fast where you rip the head off perpendicular or straight away from the body there's also commercially made tools that remove ticks 
they tend to work more of a corkscrew fashion to remove the tick. The reason for that is the mouthpieces of the tick, most varieties have a corkscrew kind of a shape to them and that they almost like unscrew from your skin versus just ripping the screw out. The reason why when you use just normal tweezers to remove the ticks and they recommend you pull straight away is some of those tweezers don't have as much support as these commercially made tools on the tick and they would increase your chance of breaking mouthpieces off and leaving the The best way to body. deal with diseases related to ticks is to prevent them even attaching. So there's some guidelines, about four guidelines to stay, keep aware of that will reduce your chances or at least limit the number of ticks that attach to you. And of course these apply mostly to the warm months, the summer and early fall time in areas that do have high ticks and those areas tend to be Midwest, East Coast, the Southeast uh, are real common. Ticks don't tend to survive well in dry heat so Southwest is pretty safe other than some areas of California and Northwest is a little bit cold for them. So in general you want to stay to the center of the trail. If, especially if it's a maintained trail, if you're in parks or national forests uh, with popular trails, generally they're going to be pretty well maintained. You want to stay to the middle and limit brushing against any vegetation. So you see this trail, well, there's not much of a trail. Uh, this would be a poor area to walk through in a high tick environment. You see all these little bushes and then even some of these trees. There's chances ticks could be on those and they'll grab onto your pants and then they'll crawl upwards until they find skin to be able to attach. So this would be a bad trail to choose. You don't want to pick a more maintained trail if you're worried about tick attachment. Now this would be an example of a trail. This is actually a dry creek bed, so be careful if it's raining. Don't hang out in these too long. Let's say it's dry out and there's no storms nearby. This would be an example of walking down the center of a trail to limit your tick exposure where you look off to the side heavy tick probability a little less over that way but definitely over here so you want to be awake and then you're going to want to wear the proper clothing generally it's going to be long pants with boots if you have higher boots such as a military style boot you can tuck your pants into your boots much like they do like in the army and if you're wearing just general hiking shoes you want to wear boot socks and then tuck your pants into those socks that way the tick can't crawl from the boot under your pants to where you can't see them and attach and hang out all day uh, before you notice them. If they crawl up your pants it's more distance for them to get knocked off before you notice them and just make their attaching more difficult because they have to get from your boots to your waistline. In addition to bright clothing you're going to want to consider a repellent. Some people have better success with that than others. You want the highest DEET content you can find. If you can find 100% DEET, that would be great. Um, I know DEET's a poison and some people would rather not use that. Um, but it is effective against biting insects such as ticks So you want to inspect yourself, your pets, uh, whoever you're hiking with, have them inspect you areas you can't see. It might be a little awkward. Um, and then remove those ticks. You want to do that every day at least. If it's high tick environment in the middle of summer, you want to try maybe possibly do that a couple times Well, a thanks day. for watching. I hope that gave you a general overview and some information maybe you didn't know about ticks and how their attachment and how to prevent them. And hopefully that will make your life in the wilderness a little more comfortable.